Welcome back, Canonites. Yesterday was the Game Awards, and as many of you know, a new Halo Wars 2 trailer was revealed, this trailer focusing on the backstory of Atriox. While the information may not be all that new if you followed all the details and press releases and so what up to now, the trailer communicates said information in a much more interesting manner, accompanied by some pretty damn awesome visuals, so let's take a look. The start of the trailer visually isn't all that important, it's Cutter and Isabel talking. This conversation does reveal, however, a rough timeline of the events between Halo 5's ending and Halo Wars 2's beginning. It's revealed that the portal to the Ark was shut down five months ago, which is likely around the time of the Guardian attack at the end of Halo 5. This puts Halo Wars 2 around late March to early April of 2559. Probably. A lot of people have been wondering whether the Guardian attack itself was the source of the portal shutting down, but I don't think so, not directly at least. To start, the Guardians were designed to keep lower races in line, mainly meant for use against less advanced technology. While this is entirely conjecture on my part, I don't think a Guardian's pulse could even affect Forerunner machines. If they could though, I'm sure they could be tuned to a specific target or tier tech, thus affecting something like 26th century human tech, but not the Forerunner tech. While the reason for the portal shutting down remains unknown, we were given a hint in Halo Mythos. In there we meet an AI called Curator, who had been trapped on the Ark since 2554. He mentions that fail-safe measures beyond their reach have barricaded the only pathway. They're referring to the created, of course. So while we don't know what this fail-safe is, that is what closed off access to the Ark. Anyway, Isabel goes on to say that a month after the portal closed, Atriox and his banish showed up, and here we get Atriox's backstory. During presumably the Covenant War, but perhaps other wars, Atriox's clan was used as quote, expendable muscle, told death in battle would speed their journey to ascension. None ever survived their suicidal missions until Atriox, and he kept surviving until he'd had enough and rebelled. And his moment of rebellion is amazing. Atriox approaches what I assume is his Sangheili commander, drops his hammer in defiance, and then catches the Sangheili sword mid-swing, allowing his hand to get cut. Funny note, if you look at the plasma blade in earlier shots, it should have cut a lot deeper. Anyway, that's followed by this fantastic shot of Atriox looking down on the commander, his anger welling up. And, as Isabel notes, his defiance inspired others to join. As another elite prepares to attack, a brute stops him. Eventually, the elites have fallen, and the group of brutes are all that remain. Of interest is the aforementioned Sengheili commander, or more specifically, his armor. The body looks like the same kind we see on Let Valir, but the helmet is something unique. Skyrim-like, as many have noted. To me, the first thing that came to mind was the ascetic armor from Halo 3. While the original order was dissolved as part of the Writ of Union, a version was reconstituted under the Covenant's Ministry of Abnegation. I have to wonder if maybe this is an ascetic warrior, if his armor might be an earlier version of the one we see in Halo 3, or if perhaps the Halo 3 version is based on an older design and this is the Covenant version. Of course, it could also be completely unrelated to the aesthetics, just kind of visually reminiscent of it. Another point of interest is the fact that the Sangheili Commander uses a red energy sword, we know that Atriox's gravity mace is a custom-made weapon, and given the red plasma it uses, fans have been speculating that this energy sword and perhaps others were used in the mace's construction. It would be a powerful bit of symbolism if true. Moving forward, the next shot shows Atriox with his army presumably on the Ark, what could be the remains of the assault carrier seen in the E3 2016 trailer in the background, but who knows. Here, Isabel notes that the Covenant never came close to taking down Atriox, and, as we know, we're fighting his group while exterminating humanity. I've brought this up before, but more than ever, I am confident that Regret's worry in Halo Wars 1 is born from concern over Atriox and his Banished. Retroactively, that is. Obviously, it was probably just a throwaway line when originally written. The next few shots are Red Team taking on Atriox and his Brutes, intercut with Cutter giving a speech about taking down Atriox. Soon, however, we get a scene with Atriox, Decimus, and another Brute entering what looks to be a UNSC facility, perhaps even the Spirit of Fire. It's interesting to see that Decimus is actually taller than Atriox, or at least that's how it appears in this shot. I love the idea of Decimus being taller, but still reporting to Atriox. After a couple of other shots, as Isabel begins a spiel about how Cutter should run, we have the scene of Isabel, followed by a plasma beam being shot from Enduring Conviction. It's hard to say if Isabel herself is the one firing it, but that's certainly what the trailer seems to want to imply. If we pause at the moment of impact, we can actually see the beam looks like it's firing on the Banished themselves. Still, the context is so unclear that nothing can be definitively said. The next shot looks to be the same beam penetrating the Ark's surface into the superstructure, where we see a number of Sentinels. If anyone was curious if they would show up, here's your confirmation. 
The shot after that shows Cutter looking on in awe as something is rising. What is unknown? A guardian hidden on the Ark? Perhaps a certain contender class Ancilla? Maybe a halo ring rising from the forge, we know one's resting in there. The final shot shows Atriox overlooking his assembled army in a shot straight out of Lord of the Rings and god is it beautiful. And that concludes the trailer. There's a lot to love especially when it comes to the visuals. We get a solid look at who Atriox is and what he wants, why he was banished from the Covenant, and we now have a hint at the timeline of events between the end of Halo 5 and the start of Halo Wars 2. Now we just need to know how the Spirit of Fire got to the Ark. Halo Wars 2 is primed to be a major entry for the Halo saga and everything we're seeing is looking pretty damn good. Let's just hope they can stick the landing in February. So what did you guys think of the trailer? Notice anything I failed to mention? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching as always and until next time this has been Halo Canon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.